Idris Mubarak is the president of the affected customers of savings and loans companies and he joins me in the studio. You must be in a really good place now that the uh, president has made, given a definite date that for Monday, uh, customers from the savings and loans companies that were affected by the cleanup will receive their money. All right, um, from my perspective, let me say, from my perspective, even though I'm here to represent, I'm here to represent um, a lot of people. Right. Being the Greater Accra president of Castlock, that's the, the, the name of our group is a Coalition of Affected Savings and Loans Customers. Okay. In, in abbreviation, we made it Castlock. Mm. So I'm the Greater Accra president of, it's, it's nationwide uh, group. Okay, but, but I'm you representing had the, Accra the Greater Accra region. Okay. Good. So for now, even let me just say, because at, 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 at large, because of some of our leaders have been embarrassed and stuff, so I have to take such role and then come out to speak sometimes on behalf of them. Okay, let's, let's focus our conversation on the announcement okay. the President made yesterday. I'm sure you knew that he would touch on it, but were you surprised to hear a definite date? Uh, well, if uh, uh, thank you very much for this question. You see, it is very much uh, unfair to mm. me, I'll say, it's very much unfair that uh, customers who have been affected by uh, these uh, collapse institutions will be subjected to this kind of uh, promises. It, it's just unfair. You call it a promise? It's the president was very definite on... Uh, well, the, the president can be definite on it because yes, yesterday, for instance, on CTTV, I made them to understand that uh, this is a scenario of you having a child in the house who mm -hmm. is bothering you about something. It's two way affair. Either you lash the child to keep quiet or you console him that, oh, baby, don't worry, I'll get this one. So it's just a pure consolation message, just to console people. You doubt that uh, the, the president will fulfill his word? 100% doubt. You doubt it? I mean, the word 100%. It's just practically impossible. But I'll give you and, the And reason. that's because, I want to understand, did he at one point um, promise to pay at a certain date and was not fulfilled? Good. So uh, can I please, uh, thank you very much for this question. I'd like to answer it by the little data I have here. Right. Okay, just, just if you can give me Definitely, a moment. Definitely, as brief as possible. Yes, as uh, brief as possible. Okay, so on Monday, that's um, 19th August 2019, you know, between the depositors and the government, we have an intermediary the receiver. or a mediator, uh, the mm. rec which is the, re the receiver. So the receiver came out on this very date, which I gave you, and that's in the name of Mr. Eric Nananipa. In case maybe after you can make research on that, that's the name of the receiver. So we've been calling, he came out with this press statement on CTFM on Monday, August 19th, 2019, that he, he, he will commence payment to depositors within seven days. But this payment that he's going to do is a cap amount, not full payment. It's a cap payment that was an amount right. of money. Was, I think it was around two billion or so. Mm. That, that's old currency, two billion. Yeah. So we've been calling. All affected customers everywhere have been called making calls to this uh, particular man okay. for our money. But he was like, the people are too many. The people who have lost their jobs out of this is over 10,000. So people the promise was not fulfilled? At all. So mm. let me quickly go to the next one. And the next promise was made when? It was on 24th or 26th of December. That was by the president himself. Okay. During the Christmas seasons. And nothing happened. No mm. show. And then he came down to the finance minister himself at a point. The same thing, he came out and said, no show. And then comes down to the town hall meeting, which was recently held in right. Kumasi. Uh, please, let me just briefly. The town hall meeting held in Kumasi too, by the vice president himself, yet still no show. And for the president to come out again, mm. to, uh, just yesterday. So in effect, he, he, the, the president has promised twice. Yes, uh -huh. and then the finance minister once, the vice president once, and then the receiver once. So look at a series of all this. Are, we, are they joking with us or what? And you, you, you think we should sit down and believe it? I, I sincerely doubt it. Mm. Sin honestly, I'm here in speaking on behalf of my colleagues. Of, right. Even though we are of the hope that they fulfill their promises or their... their, their so you would be surprised then on Monday when customers receive the money. It would come to you as a shock. Well, let me, honestly speaking, honestly speaking, to come to me as a... Let me hold your thought for a minute. I'm not done with you yet. Chunibwa Kodia is the Executive Director of the Association of Savings and Loans Companies. He has been speaking to Grace Amwasari on the data announced to pay depositors of savings and loans companies that were shut down. Thank you very much. Um, we are happy for the government making such a definite 
uh, pronouncement. So we are only waiting to see what will happen from the 24th. Of course, he said from 24th. And so um, let's see a few days after 24th to see. Already we are aware uh, some people have received their money. So, so it's not like they are now going to pay. Uh, a number of customers have received their monies. Um, I can testify to that. Once these monies are paid to every customer, um, we will know that one, we don't, we don't have any difference between a customer of a universal bank and a customer of a savings and loans company. They are all treated the same way because the customers of the universal bank had their monies in full and therefore, if the customer of the savings and loans also have its money in full, then it goes to buttress the point that um, every customer of a regulated financial institution is very important. But what do you make of um, Mr. Borch's submission? Uh, yes, uh, I think it's, it's basically um, he he's said something that is uh, around exactly what. But he are sounded also like he had more confidence in. Um, Yes. Okay. On Monday, uh, at know, this point, I don't know. Okay, I don't know which of the unions or groups which he belongs to, probably. But based on our uh, group, like I said, the catalog, first it emerged out of uh, first allied uh, affected customers or depositors, which we open our door to other uh, collapsed financial depositors who also join us to right. form a team. So please, what I'm I'm looking at in his. If you can see, even though he is of the hope that they, they will pay, you can see that he's not, he's not so sure of it. Okay. He wasn't so sure. He was like, the way we were of the hope, like I, I made an earlier statement that even though we do not trust and believe that what the president said is going to come to pass, but we are of the hope that the president does that. But I would like to uh, give a little suggestion that if the uh, other banks, which is the major banks, all the uh, collapsed major, like this, those that fall under CBG and co. You said that there was no problem with them, they were all paid in full. So I was like, there's a data which they can get from these collapsed uh, savings and loans. They can migrate all those customers onto the either CBG or GCB and right. probably, uh, no, so that they'll be able to deal with it swiftly. Mm. So and pay in bulk as they did with the uh, banks under CBG. Very good. So that they can handle it in that way. It will help. Honestly, if you think about it, so you can see that nationwide, so if you look at the people, 4.6 okay. million affected depositors. Mm. 4 that's, 6 that's, million. That number is quite huge. huge. Idris Mubarak is a president of customers, uh, affected customers of savings and loans companies.